So I thought maybe you guys might like to see some of my demo reels um, that I made uh, that have some of my characters in it. So uh, we can start with that instead of like, hi, I'm Blake Shepard. You might know me from these shows. So this was my this was my very first demo reel that I ever made. And uh, where is my room? Oh, in the reservation, only one room was requested. <gasps> Just one? One room will be fine. <laughs> Did anybody see Moyokin TV? They don't say civilizations advance you for nothing. Really cute show. Even monsters can be registered, just like humans. So maybe we should be keeping a lower profile. Nonsense. Uh, yes, pleased to meet you. We're from the Army's Intelligence Division, State Section 3. <laughs> I feel like my blood is on fire. My heart's pounding so fast, it's about to burst out of my chest. You're nothing to me. I turn gravity upside down and tear through my enemies from the inside out. This is my road, the bad. <laughs> Crap! My iPad shifted with that prick at me from behind! Damn it! I can't let Akito take over now! Would you guys like to see the uh, the next one? Yeah. Yes. yeah sure. This is why I really started playing with After Effects. <laughs> this is messed up! We can't let him lock us up in solitary confinement! That's right! I have this! No, I won't! Get the heck out of this village! Hey, Pee-Pee, you can't just barge in like that! 
They'll be angry when they get back! Jeez! <laughs> this is my magical, mystical power! I'm just intensely connected to your heart! I mean, you're having tummy troubles, aren't you? Oh my god, he's right! Why do I have to do this? Because fortune telling is in! If that's how it's going down, everyone, throw up things they can use as weapons! The winner is Haruka Sayagusa! What is that? It's quite conspicuous. Oh my god. It really bothers me. I don't think so. I was faster. No, oh, have they challenged me, Takashima? I don't know. Like a jigsaw puzzle? That sandwich is mine. How can you sound so cold? This is your sister! This was our sister! Hey, using tactics like that to threaten us and pressure us to act kind of rude? Yay! I'm Christina, by the way. Sorry, I just dropped it on the panel. Christina's going to hang on, too. Blake. Christina's your website, Christina Kelly. Oh, yeah, ChristinaMarieKelly.net. That's got my old demo on it. I wish I could send you my new one. It's on Google Drive. Why you don't have on your website? It is on my website. Your new one? No, my old one. That's what I mean. Why you have your own? I don't know, because I don't really use my website anymore. It's in media. It is down. You can just use that one right there. Yeah, I want I don't need to be a burden, but how do you think Rutil would feel about that? A pure, unbridled truth might leave its own wounds, or worse yet, it might change things in ways you've never imagined. Just keep your composure, and watch your actions. Thanks for waiting. Let's dig in. Who's the guy in meal trash? <gasps> They're not your friends, right? Wow, her face is really ugly up close. How sad. I don't want to lose my appetite, so please leave. You guys are perfect? Dare you dodge when you know you deserve to die? Maybe so, but haven't you ever heard of a thing called nothing? That's why I have absolutely no problem taking your life. I'm gonna put a hole for you now! Voices of Blake Shepard and Christina Kelly. I didn't know. <laughs> so, would you guys like to start with any questions? Are there any shows that uh, you'd like to talk about? Like oh, yeah. yeah, actually, from uh, Air Gear, uh, it was it's probably one of my like, favorite shows ever. Yeah. So, what was it like, like <laughs> voicing, like, I guess, two different voices for Akito and Akito? Man, I always like when I get to do that because it, uh, even like, so in my, the most recent one was uh, Saint Seiya. Yeah. I did a video game for that, and they had me do two different voices for, for uh, Shiryu, because they had like his green armor, but then when he got to his gold armor, he sounded like more awesome. So they were like, yeah, do your normal Shiryu, and then do like a cooler version. So I had to like come up with a new version of Shiryu's <laughs> voice for that. So it was, uh, that. so stuff like that's always fun, because you want to kind of, you know, it's like they sort of have to comp, they complement each other, right? So like I basically just, with Agito Akito, I just used all the ranges I didn't use in one for the other, right? So yeah, it's, it's always cool to get to do that. And it's it's a good opportunity to kind of showcase for directors your range, you know? If you've, if you've got the comfort to do that kind of stuff, it's a really nice opportunity to do that. So yeah, it was, it was a great opportunity. And I talked about in our panel earlier that that was, that was the very first show as an actor where I was like, wow, I made it. Because the director was just like, dude, I got a role for you. Just like, no audition, just like, you can do it. 
So it's like, cool. And he didn't even realize that uh, I had that range. Uh, so the, the very first demo reel I showed you guys, it was like, the guy that was like way up here. And he was like, whoa. At the end, uh, that character was in an ensemble with, with the director's character, John Swayze, the voice actor. He was in that ensemble with me. So he's like, who's that guy? And the director's like, that's Blake Shepard. I was like, brand new. He's like, Blake can do that? Okay. And so he's like, dude, you can do this other thing. So that ended up kind of segueing me into being able to do air gear. So cool segue. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, air gear was a great show. Yeah, great show. You needed a new seat, though. I wish they could use the So you came here to ask questions, so raise your hands. All right, okay, cool. Okay. Um, so when you're doing your demo reels, I, I see that you have visual demo reels, and then, so when you're sending them out, are you just sending audio? And when you are sending audio, is it just you? Do you add sound effects or anything on your own? Or, yeah. you know, do you do both, like for visual and just audio only, or what do we do? Yeah, so here? usually what I do is I just rip it, I just rip it straight off of the DVD, or like the Blu-ray or something, so... Uh, I don't add any extra stuff. Like on on that second one, I I kind of added some like a, that little weird like thing. Yeah. Like that was just me screwing around in After Effects. So like I just I was doing some particle testing, and that was just like it was a weird accident that happened. And so I just kind of saved it in a folder that was just like fun stuff. You know what I mean? And then I just thought, okay, maybe there's something in this folder that I can use for like something silly. And so I just made that weird. Because I had just done Parasite, I think, so I was kind of in a Parasite mood, so it, it kind of felt like that like weird bio thing, so I just threw it in there for fun. But for that, yeah, I threw in some sound effects, uh, just for the bumpers, but I mean, even there, you can tell, like, I didn't really mix it very well, I just kind of like threw it in there and did it, so yeah, it's not, I, I, don't, I don't really think adding extra things really is a good idea. You're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not really supposed to because it's it's really just more about your voice. Like, you don't want your sound effects stealing the show. The last thing you want is a director coming back to you and going, hey, so uh, could you help me make my demo reel? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then you're like doing other stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless, unless you're doing, unless you're not, like you said, if you don't have a visual reel, like if you need something to kind of like I would say maybe if you're segueing into your voice, like if there's like a big explosion at the beginning and then it starts with your voice after. Like uh, a fade, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like a fade into it. Yeah, or that's something. not the same thing. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Like don't I wouldn't put I wouldn't put extra stuff behind your voice, I guess. Yeah, because they want to hear how you sound as the actor yeah. and hear your range and like what you can do. Like when you're submitting to a casting agent or an an agency or a director, they want to hear your your range. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to hear something like that enhanced or yeah. You know. Well, and even with my two demo reels, so the way I did it, I already I kind of had that first one that was like my silly fun one that had a bunch of like wacky voices on it. So the second one that I did, I made it a little bit more just kind of like lead role kind of sounding people mm -hmm. because at the time I just wanted to do a, I wanted to do bigger roles like I didn't I didn't want to just keep doing like bit parts or like background characters and stuff so I was trying to show more of my like lead role voice range um, so that was why the second one was a little less diverse than the first one. Yeah, I was going to ask about like being typecasted and how to kind of, is that a bad thing or, you know, like, oh, for sure I'm more than likely going to get a part as this type of character because that's what I'm always cast as. Yeah. Is that like a bad thing necessarily? <coughs> no, I don't, I don't think it's ever a bad thing if you fit well in that. You know what I mean? Like if that's your range. I don't think that's a bad thing, but if you have more range than what you're being cast as, then yeah, you should you should find a way to showcase your And ask stuff. about auditions. Yeah. That's like on you as the actor to be like, hey, like I know I can do this and then if you mm -hmm. hear about the show coming up, you just you just ask. Yeah, that's that's something Christina's really good about and, and I've learned a lot from her on that. Like okay. even even me being a veteran, like it was never really cool to know too much about the shows that were coming in because the directors used to think it was super weird for you to like know anything about anime mm -hmm. but now it's a little bit more common for actors to be fans of anime so like a lot of actors 
figure out what's really hot in Japan and then find out when it's getting licensed and then like approach the studio and like, hey, I saw you just license this. Who's the director? Can I audition? You know. So a lot of I think a lot of more actors do that than admit it. You know, like uh, because they they don't want other actors getting the one up on them. You know, yeah. they're keeping track of it like they're doing the legwork. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's it's a it's a really big deal if you do that extra effort. And I mean that goes with the, that goes for anything like theater in general. Um, but like if you're gonna submit to like an agency, like if you want to get representation, you have to have a character demo and you have to have a commercial demo, or they're not gonna look twice at you. And usually you have to have like a referral these days. So if, if mm. VO is something you're interested in, you need to get someone who's been doing it for a really long time to help build those two things for you. So. And take acting classes. That's what mm, yes. Five months, and my first show was No Game, No Life, and I've been doing it ever since. So that was my journey into it. What's a Broadway show that you found really inspiring that made you want to go into Broadway? Uh, well, I I loved all the Disney Golden Age movies. Suddenly see more. Yeah, uh, I was Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors in high school. Um, I was in Zombie Prom in college. Uh, so lots of stuff, but. I love the rock musicals. Those are those are my favorites because I have more of like a contralto did you like, singing voice. Did you like Rock of Ages? Did you see? Rock yeah, of I liked Rock of Ages. Cruise? I thought he was awesome. Yeah, I thought, I he, thought was he was great. Yeah, yeah. it's hilarious. So to prepare for each voice, because you're playing different characters for each role you do, like how do you think of how to make that character through your voice? Like, do you use? Um, What's the one I'm looking for? Umami? <laughs> oh my god. Are you, are, you, like, are you asking like how do we like look at a character and know what it's going to sound like? Is that what you mean? Kind of. Uh, like how do you come up with the sound? I mean I think that's more acting training. Okay. So I mean to, to be quite honest a lot of it is just like like blatant narcissism <laughs> where you just like you kind of like figure out what you think it should sound like and then you just do it with a lot of confidence mm -hmm. and then hopefully the director doesn't think it sucks right. <laughs> and so, you get so a, they, yeah. Make it. yeah pretty yeah. much I mean it's it, it and that's but that's acting in general right because you and you learn very quickly in acting like you can only sound like you mm -hmm. and even if you're putting on voices like you like no one is gonna be Tim Curry Right, Tim Curry is even if he's playing Frankenfurter from from yes. Little no. Shop or from, uh, Rocky, from Horror. Rocky Horror, Horror, like no one else is going to be able to be him doing that because he's unique. So a lot of what acting school teaches you, and correct me if I'm wrong, is about knowing your strengths, knowing where you uh, where you like finding your voice. And using that and, and working on crafting your voice. Mm -hmm. So it's not about looking at a character and thinking, I have to transform into this character. You are doing that, but you're doing it with your instrument. So you're doing it to the best of your ability. And if you've been cast by a director, then you have to believe to some degree that they think you're right for that part. And you just have to commit to doing the best version of that you can. Okay. So a lot of it really is just kind of being confident enough in yourself to deliver a good performance and remembering your training and, you know, channeling intention and doing all those things that you do as an actor, I think, anyway. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I mean, that really you can just look at the, sometimes you get the luxury of looking at a bio of a character and you can see, like, their backstory and from that in their age, their age, their, lo their look, uh, I can look at a character and go, that character is, gonna, is 15 years old has pink hair and pink eyes, she's probably going to sound pretty young and probably feisty and kind of like a princess, you know? It's just, and if she's like sad looking, you know, has chopped off hair and is holding a samurai sword, she's probably going to have more of like a demure, lower register resonant sounding voice. Well, and you guys also all saw Death Note, right? The live action that they did? Yeah. So, but, but, well, but, but, but that's what yeah. I Netflix. But but I'm saying that's a, the Netflix one. But I'm saying that's a great example. It's a great example because you have someone like Willem Dafoe, who is one of the best actors of, of our time, uh, who's in a role that didn't have the best script, and he did the best with it that he could. You know what I mean? And it's 
it's not necessarily like he doesn't he doesn't suck because the show wasn't great. You know, it's just you work with what you have, and, and you you as an actor have to rely on it on the script in order to to inform what the character says and thinks and feels. Right, like. You, if the character's an orphan and they were abused and they're also an assassin and they really <laughs> like, you know, noodles, like that's not gonna, those intentions aren't gonna be in every single line that character does because that character might have a specific intention they have in that line that, you know, maybe is, doesn't fit with those personality traits because the writers decided to go a different direction. So, you know, it's, I feel like if you get, if you get too heady with it, you end up just bogging yourself down and you make less interesting choices. So, that's something to think about. And I mean, at the end of the day, like I was talking to a young actor who had just started and he was, he was really excited to be doing it, but I could tell he was making some of the mistakes that I made in the beginning. Like I was just talking about, he was really stiff. Everything that he said sounded like he was kind of like tightening his throat really hard. And what I told him was, is I'm like, hey man, I was like, I thought you sounded really good, but if you don't mind, like, I'd like to give you some advice. Do you mind if I give you some advice? He's like, yeah, sure, anything you got. I was like, it's good, you're obviously a good actor, but I was like, if I were you, because I made these mistakes, like, relax and act, but also try to sound cool. You know, like, I, I know that sounds kind of silly, but like, try to find those tones in your voice that work to make you sound like you have a little bit of like gravitas or like some kind of like tone to you. Because you notice the actors that are really successful, they have these little like vocal fries and tones and things, and they're doing that intentionally. That's there to make the character sound cooler. So try to, try to find that in your voice and do that. So I mean, there's a technicality to it as well, aside from just the acting, that you're also like, and I mean, I guess you, you probably heard it in some of my, my vocal things where it's... Sorry, am I talking to you? You are That's the longest answer I've okay, ever sorry. heard. Sorry. I'm done, I'm done. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. There's a reason why this panel's an hour. Oh my god. It's like, ha! Ah. Christina's hungry, sorry. No! Speaking of live action anime, what are actually your favorite live action anime annotations? If you have any. There aren't any. <laughs> Bleach. No, the Dragon Ball Z one. <laughs> no, honestly, no, I take that back. You know what it is? There was a there was a Street Fighter one that they made. There was the uh, it was the origin story of Ken and Ryu. Did you guys see that one that had um it had that like beast guy in it. Not Blanca, but it was like another the red headed one. Akuma? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and like, was, they go to like a cave and there's a demon there and it has like glowy eyes and he's from one of the games. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's so he's like he was an old I guess he trained with the sensei that they had, but he like went bad and he like he basically like owned these weird demon powers and then he became a demon and he like lives in this cave and they have to go fight him because he That's kills the sensei. That sounds like Akuma. Yeah. Dog, it was awesome. He trans he transits the dark. It's like an hour too long, but if you really like Street Fighter, it's pretty fun. So who had more questions related to voice acting? Okay, you. You and then you. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You like you were talking about your Shaggy impressions when you were. Yeah. Like starting out, do you guys have like a go-to like party trick impression that you like whip out to like no. make people laugh? Or <laughs> <laughs> no. Christina's pretty funny when she gets hangry. No, I, no, sorry, I totally cut you off, but no, I, I, when people are like, can you do the voice? I'm like, it's just my voice. No. Yeah, that'll be $100 for the first hour and 50 for the rest. Thank you very much. Yeah. I definitely have some friends who've watched Food Wars now, and when they see me, like, I'll always, like, slip into your welcome, and they go, <laughs> <laughs> They love it. It's really funny. That's cute. Um, no, not so much. I don't, uh, I, honestly, I don't even ever tell people I'm a voice actor. Um, when I, when, uh, me and my fiancé first met, um, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't even tell her I did acting, because I didn't want her to think I was poor. It's <laughs> 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 like, oh, you're an actor? <laughs> you must know yeah. Tom Cruise. Never mind. My husband, my husband has employees who have kids, 
that fo like found out that I did voiceover, and they were like, hey, hey, man, do you think that you could uh, ask Christina to g give give me an autograph for my daughter? You know, things like that. Like that's that's worth it for me. Like that, I love I love doing stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, my husband talks more about me being a voice actor than I do. <laughs> Yeah, my niece yeah. Uh, thinks I'm a total dork, but she has friends that think I'm really cool, which really <laughs> drives me oh. nuts. Oh, <laughs> cute. You had a question. Uh, yeah. Does um, does being able to like sing and stuff like that give you any type of advantage? Absolutely. Because you, you have a bigger range, and when you, you know how to use your voice as as a singer, mm -hmm. you you can do anything, in my opinion, if yeah. you're a trained singer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, We're both singers, so yeah, and I'm and I'm not even like there's definitely. He was in a screamo band. No, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a disco band. I believe it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's a screamo um, disco band. But but I will say even even with that training, uh, I, I wasn't ever pro professionally trained as a musician. Um, I just play like some guitar and really like a wah wah pedal and you know. Sir. It's basically like Rick James dance rock is what we did, but it was uh it was it was very humbling to be put in some musical shows where I actually had to sing and like match pitch with other people and it was all like on time and like when you're put in that position if you don't have any formal training it's it can get scary pretty quick because you're you know everyone else just sounds great you're like can I go again please <laughs> so you know yeah I was just wondering if y'all had any favorite voice roles that you've done in the past I can, can I say my favorite voice role that you've done? You may. So many you can hear from Food Wars. It's my favorite. I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And he's a Scorpio. Soma is a Scorpio, and so am I. So I love him even more. Well, your character from Akame Got Kill is my favorite. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm, because I really like Loki from, uh, from Thor. They have the same uh, name. Not same show. Uh, oh. Loki was from Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. Oh, I don't like that show. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am confused, Shannon. What are you talking about? I don't know. He's messing with me. But. Um, I really I, like this Julio guy from uh, Cross Orange. Yeah, very nice guy. Yeah, he's he's super dude. That was a terrible character. Oh, I love <laughs> he was so awful. awful. He was a terrible. He was like character. a cooler anime Joffrey. He was. <laughs> that show had so many things in it that it didn't need. Like it would have been better without the, those. Things. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> Seriously, I know what you're implying. Same. Were there any more questions? Oh, I also love Deb Debly from Monster Hunter because I was basically doing anime Cartman. Because <laughs> 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 I've ever seen it, it's really funny. Yeah, the question. Bye. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so with all like panels, you see cosplay and stuff. So I guess have you ever seen any of your characters being cosplayed? And would you ever like cosplay as one of your characters? It's just like one of the uh, I mean, I've, I've worn the naked apron guy <laughs> on a stream one time. I was at naked. I had I was wearing his outfit that he wore at like the fe the school festival. I actually do cosplay as a lot of my characters. Um, I don't know where you could see pictures. Maybe on Instagram. Instagram. Um, the gram. You can look it. Up. You can look it up and show. Oh yeah. Um, go to go to your website and then click on Instagram. Yes. But yeah, it's fun. I, I didn't do it at first because um, I was too afraid that I wouldn't be taken seriously or like get made fun of. But um, one of my friends is a professional cosplayer and my friend Paris, who my friend Charles actually introduced me to. Um, and oh, there's me in Paris as Alice and Megami. Oh, well, you can't see it. Dang it. You can zoom in. Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> there we go. Enhance. And hit the X. So you can. There you go. So yeah, there's me right there. And there's Paris. Oh, there's me as Evelyn from League of Legends. Mm. Um, but yeah. Look at all these other voice actresses that you can follow, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sponsor. But have you ever cosplayed as one of your characters? Uh, no. No? No. He just goes as Bleak Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did one time, for uh, for those of you that were in our last uh, panel, 
we were talking about Wake and Blake. Does anybody hear that story? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that was the closest I came wearing a wig and a. No. no <laughs> Never again. Not for me. But uh, we have um, 10 more minutes, so ask away. Any burning questions? For your Shaggy boys, would you ever like pursue an actual like voice? Yeah. Like, shaggy? Heck yeah, I would. Because I know this is coming out with like more Scooby Doo stuff and more and more. Like, Honestly, though, I mean, I'm just gonna be straight. Like, I don't like how the new Scooby Doo stuff is getting so pervy. Like, that really bothers me. I just don't. I wouldn't want to be in some Scooby Doo show where they're like sexualizing the characters. Yeah. It's just gross. It's like, just solve mysteries already. Like, yeah. I'd do it if they brought back like a pup named Scooby Doo and it was for kids, you know? It's just, it's getting, it's yeah. getting too much. Like, I don't. I don't understand why they have to just like ruin everything with that, um, making everything gross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What but about Super Saiyan Shaggy? Is that appealing? <laughs> <laughs> why that would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so um, uh, yeah, it's super hard. It's so super hard we could probably take one more question because it's seven twenty-eight. So one oh. more. Okay. So for the demo reels that you do, do you record at home or like in a professional studio? And if you do them at home, what do you use to record? Absolutely, you need to have a professional studio if you're yeah. gonna if you're going to create a commercial demo or a character demo, you need to be recording that in a professional studio because if you're gonna submit that to directors or casting agents, they're gonna listen to it for ten seconds and if it doesn't sound right in that like that first ten or fifteen seconds, they're gonna scrap it and they're not gonna listen to it. Yeah, they'll move it. on. Their their time's valuable. Like yeah. If you're if you're really serious about getting into this, spend the three or four hundred dollars or whatever it is to just like, you know. It's gonna cost you more than that if you were. <laughs> yeah. No. But but like a lot of those those VO classes and stuff, aren't they like four hundred bucks? I guess yeah. If you go like I'm, sh I thought you were saying recording from home, right? I, th I thought that's what you were trying. So I wasn't sure if you do it from home or. If yeah, I mean. You'd... Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hire a professional. Yeah, hire a professional. If You're you better off. It's less stressful too. Like if you try to do it yourself, you'll never finish it. Yeah, you that's know what, what I, mean? I did. I hired someone because he was like, "Oh, well, you can find the scripts if you want. Um, it'll save you a little bit less money." Or you can have me write the script for you. And I said, I don't know anything about writing commercial scripts, John. You write it. Well, and the, the, problem, and that's his whole the problem that you're going to run into, too, is it's like, do you want to be in the VO business or do you want to be in the VO making business, yeah. right? Like, if you make your own demo and it sounds really good, people are going to be like, who made your demo? It sounds really good. Like, I made it myself. Can you make mine? How much do you charge, right? And then suddenly now you're not voice acting. You're making other people's VO demos. So do what you're good at. Like that's that would be my advice. If you're if you're strong in that field, like if you have musical background like you do, you probably would be okay to do it because you know mics, you know drivers, you know what kind of audio interface. You have you a setup. Use. Yeah, you can you can put something together that's that's solid. But I mean, you can even say yourself like, is it easier for you to bring someone else in to record something, or are you like, I'm gonna do it all myself? Uh, like how much? Easier to have like a second set of ears. Yeah. But also having a script. It's not even just about the setup. It's like having a script that's gonna show your diversity and your range. So if you don't know what you're like, how, like what's gonna show you off well, you might need someone to to listen to you and figure out like what might be good to put on your demo. Mm -hmm. Or you can make a demo by yourself. And then if it sounds really good, we'll call you and you can make our demos. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend finding something that someone else has already done. Um, I think finding someone to write a script for you who's a professional is the, the best thing for you to do. Yeah, yeah. Because then it's original. A lot of those, a lot of those classes, when you pay for them, they uh, yeah. some of them they will write a script for you. Mm -hmm. Like they'll have a they'll have a pre made template or something that they might you know change for you. Mm -hmm. um, and oh. then that way you get all the music and you know so it sounds like different radio spots or something. Can I want to say one thing. Um, and the the great thing about taking a class like that um, to create a demo is you also learn if this is something that's right for you. If voice yeah. acting is really a journey that you should be taking because it's not just about making funny voices and playing you Aww. know random characters it's it's just it's just not it's it's acting and it is hard and it's a lot of no's before any yeses and that's something you really need to prepare yourself for if you really do want to get into this business you're going to get 
tons of no's. We still get no's all, all the time. This is not a consistent business. So um, I think taking classes and figuring out if this is something that you really want to do is something I really recommend. Yeah. All right. but, um, Thank you guys for coming. So